What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time you watch one of my videos, I'm a second year, wait hold on. I was a second year medical student studying at King's College London. I just finished off my second year and I'll be going into my third year in September. Uh, and I'm out here in Kenya, currently on holiday in Kenya visiting my family. I know it's a bit ironic, I know it's like a study with me video and I'll be working. The thing is, um, the exam finished around a week and a half ago and I've done absolutely nothing for the last week and a half. But my brain is actually turning to sponge. Um, so I have an hour and a half, about an hour and a half, two hours previous morning and I thought I may as well use this time wisely and do a bit of anatomy. The thing is, although my exam was a week and a half ago, um, I revised enough anatomy to pass the exam. I definitely didn't revise the anatomy in enough detail to actually remember it in my long-term memory and to remember it as a doctor. The thing about medicine is, it's not like your exams in high school or my exams in my last degree. In my last degree and in high school as well, I'd always just try to memorize the theory to do just enough to pass the exam then as soon as the exam's done, if you asked me a week and a half later about what the exam was, I literally would have no idea what I was talking about. Um, the thing about medicine is that it really, really is important to make sure that everything, or at least the important things, are in your long-term memory. Because in medicine, knowing your theory can literally be the difference between saving your life and not. Uh, and especially anatomy, anatomy is something that I'll use every single day as a foundation doctor and as a consultant as well. So it really is important for me to make sure that I actually know my anatomy in and out. So how about two hours free this morning? I'm going to be taking you guys through a study with me session about learning my anatomy. Although it is based on anatomy, you can definitely apply my revision technique to anything that you're learning. Um, I'm also going to be throwing in a few tips here and there for you guys to hopefully help you guys when you're learning your theory as well. So I have three months off of summer. That's so, so much time. So every now and again, I'm going to try and throw in maybe one or two hour revision sessions just to make sure that I'm actually up to date with my knowledge make sure that everything I learned is actually in my long-term knowledge. So I hope this video really helps you guys out. Before we start the study with me session, if you can take two minutes to give this video a thumbs up, it really helps this channel grow. It really helps this channel reach more people. So let's get started. Right, so this is my first time uh, recording one of these videos. So hopefully it'll go all right. Um, but I woke up around 9 a.m. this morning um, and then at 10 a.m. I started um, revising. So it's quite a nice balcony where my mom lives. Um, there's also a nice little desk setup, so I decided to work outside. It makes working just a slightly bit easier. Um, so as I was eating breakfast, I watched a few videos. Um, I watched Alex Iono's uh, cover of a new song as well, and also listened to Beyong's um, new song as well. So check that out. I think it's called um, Gucci Demon. Really good song. So after about half an hour of having breakfast and watching videos, I decided to actually get some work done. Um, so the very first thing I do in the morning is to write down the main things I want to get done in the day. Um, I write down a list of maybe four or five things that I really, really need to get done. And then after that, I move on to write down all the other little things I need to get done during the day. Um, so I use this app called TickTick. Um, and the really good thing about TickTick is that it allows me to organize my life into different categories. Um, so I have a category of uh, my research for, uh, for my urology, uh, for my dermatology. I also have like a life kind of category where I put all of my life things and life goals I need to do. Um, I have one for medicine as well. So all of my... Um, things I need to get done for medicine are put into this category. Um, and then after that, I have uh, my YouTube kind of life as well and some YouTube vlog ideas as well. The other really cool thing that allows you to do is to write a bit of a description about each task. So if you want to give a bit more information about the task that you want to do, it allows you to do that as well. Um, as well as that, it also allows you to set a date and time for the actual tasks you want to get done. So if there's a particular time in the day that you want to get done, if you want to set a reminder for it, um, set a repeat reminder, it allows you to do that as well, which is really, really good. And that's pretty much how I organize my life. Um, my whole life is literally organized through this app. So the first thing I started off doing is planting a seed in my forest app. As you guys may have seen in my last video, I use the forest app to divide my time. So I like to do 60 minutes of work followed by a five minute break. But make sure you divide your time, give yourself enough breaks, because if you're gonna be revising for the whole day, it really, really is important to make sure you have enough breaks here and there. So the next thing I like to do during the morning is to put my earphones on, uh, play some good music, and then start off by doing all the kind of housekeeping stuff, all the kind of administration stuff that needs to get done. Um, so this morning that I was looking at emails, replying to all the emails, um, all of my kind of medicine emails, any research emails as well, um, any YouTube emails, get all of that done um, and out of the way. I also use this as an opportunity to kind of go through my uh, tick tick. So all of the different things I need to get done um, in my different categories. I take a few of the most important things I need to get done um, and then do that first. It's kind of all the unimportant, but still kind of important stuff to do in my life. Stuff that can be easily neglected, um, things that are not directly kind of related to my success, but are really, really important to my life in the long run. But it's basically a way to kind of organize my life um, and get everything together, plan things ahead of time, put things in my calendar, and just organize my life. Right, so after about half an hour of doing some housekeeping, I decided to actually start working and start doing my anatomy. So to organize all of my lectures and to remember where I am in my revision, I have an Evernote document for all of my lectures uh, throughout the entire year. And then by each lecture, I have a box which I use to tick. And um, the ticks basically represent different things. 
the first tick in the box represents me actually um, having written the notes for lecture, all of my handwritten notes. The second tick represents me having gone through the uh, information once and mem having memorized the information once. And the third tick is um, having memorized it twice and so on. So if I haven't already mentioned, today I'm doing the anatomy of the hand. So all of the um, bones of the hand, all the muscles, all of the innovation, um, and also the blood supply as well. So I first started off by reading the actual lecture slides. So I used Microsoft OneNote to import all of the um, PDF files that were given from the university. I import them into my Microsoft OneNote, and then during the lecture, I'm making notes on the side of the actual um, slides. So I read through all the slides first, and once I felt like I had good grasp of that, I then moved on to my notes um, that I made during exam period time. All of my notes I made were using my um, Samsung Galaxy Tab S4. So all of these were my handwritten notes using my pen, my S Pen. Um, I read through that as well. And once I felt like I had quite a good grasp of the whole um, subject as a whole, I then moved on to using Pygmonic. Pygmonic is um, an online tool I use pretty much every single day for all of my anatomy and some of my normal physiology as well. Um, but I'll move on to explaining that in a second. So Pygmonic is an online website that uses pictures and mnemonics as well and relates them to characters in the image. These pictures and mnemonics together really help you remember a lot of information quite easily and allows you to begin developing ways in which to remember um, large amounts of information. So to give you an example of this, here's the homepage. What you want to do is click browse, um, go into browse and type in whatever topic you're looking for. Um, so in my case, I typed in the hand bones and it brings up the first Pygmonic, uh, which is created for you. The first thing that I normally do is listen to the educational video. And then after that, I move on to the story video. The carpal hand bones are described in this Pygmonic by the eight carpal bones. The mnemonic to help remember these bones is some lovers try positions that they can't handle shown as the lovers trying positions until they can't handle it anymore. The S in the mnemonic represents the scaphoid bone, the scaffold. L stands for the lunate bone. So as you've just seen, it starts off by giving you a mnemonic and relates each of the mnemonics to a picture. And it's a combination between the picture and the mnemonic itself that allows you to retain a large amount of information quite easily. And then after the educational video is the actual story. And this is my favorite part because it's actually really, really funny. Um, they put together a little story with all the different characters, all the different pictures uh, to give you a story that ties in the mnemonic, the pictures itself, and then a story that allows you to remember all of the different pieces and all the different types of information that you're trying to remember. So here's a story of the hand bones. These lovers met on the hand bones and remained there together happily for years. But after seeing a few magazine covers too many, they began to feel like so I had to cut the story a bit short. Um, it got slightly past PG-12. And you know on this channel, we like to keep things PG-11. So it might be a bit too much for the 12 year olds that might watch my channel. So once you're done learning the actual theory and you feel like you've actually committed this memory, you can then move on to the quizzes. Quizzes are really, really good because it increases your ability uh, to remember the information you just learned by asking you real questions. If you're not entirely sure what the answers are, you can then use the hints to kind of stimulate your memory and stimulate what you've just learned. One other thing that's really good about the quizzes is that it actually tracks your progress. So it tracks all the answers you got right, all of the answers you got wrong, and it knows exactly um, what it needs to repeat to make sure that you get the answers right in the future. The thing that I really like about Pygmonic is that it applies space repetition really, really well. It creates daily quizzes for you using smart software space repetition algorithms. Um, these algorithms factor in different things like um, quiz accuracy, whether or not you used hints, when you last access these quizzes as well. It saves all of these quizzes on your home screen, so whenever you come onto Pygmonic, you can go through all of the quizzes that you've done for all of the Pygmonics, making sure that you're always able to remember this information and retain this information um, over the long run. Below the actual Pygmonic, there's also a ton of information, including pictures um, and different information, and all of the actual hand bones. One of the really cool things about Pygmonic as well is the ability to customize and create the Pygmonics. Um, you can add different topics, um, different facts to the library of um, existing Pygmonics, this is really good because it kind of allows you to strengthen your memory anchors by adding different facts, um, videos, images, and you know whatever you kind of want to uh, to the existing Pygmonics. Personally, I find this quite useful because I always like to add my own kind of research, um, add a few things here and there that I've learned. That I think are really, really important for you know for the actual topic itself. So as an example, um, when I was doing a bit of research on hand bones, I found out that if you fracture your scaphoid, you get pain um, in the anatomical snuff box. And I thought this is a really, really key question that could come from the exam. So I decided to add it to the list of um, Pygmonic facts. What you can also do, which is really, really cool, is to add your own mnemonics, add your own characters, make a story yourself, and make it a way that you can easily remember it in your own specific way. As a final point, Pygmonic is always up to date. So it has a number of students around the world, like myself, who contributes the list of facts out there. These facts are superimposed um, by the Pygmonic team of experts themselves. 
uh, basically make it one of the most up-to-date and reliable tools out there. Pygmonic also ties in together different types of topics. Um, all of the Pygmonics are related with similar characters across the topics and related facts as well, making it really easy to differentiate between the similar facts um, and tie in all of the information that you need to know. Um, and also the really good thing is that they have this available on iOS and Android as well. So whenever I'm on the go, whether I'm traveling, on a plane or whatever, I can kind of always go through my Pygmonics and have that um, at hand whenever I need it. If you guys are interested in getting Pygmonic, I managed to get a link that will get you guys 20% off per month. So I'll leave the link down in the description below. So after doing all of this, I moved on to the Moneymaker. I brought out my Samsung Galaxy Tab S4 and then used that as a whiteboard to try and recall all of this information from my memory. Um, so another tip is to use diagrams, to use pictures as much as you can. Um, so as you can see here, I'm drawing out all of the bones. I know my drawing is really, really bad, but I'm trying to draw out all of the bones from memory and trying to write out each of the names, all of the mnemonics and pygmonics and all of the characters um, that I learned from pygmonic as well, all from my memory and testing my active recall. So after the first hour was done, I finally had my first five minute break. Uh, on my five minute break, I brought out my tablet. Um, I watched some YouTube videos, um, scrolled on Instagram, basically just procrastinated for five minutes, which gave me so much more energy to carry on for the last hour of revision. After revising, Richard and I then went to a coffee shop. Uh, we sat down for a little while. Richard got his hair cut and I just sat in the coffee shop and edited this video. Um, after that, if you're interested, we drove to one of the local shopping centers. I wanted to show um, Richard what the shopping centers are like in Nairobi. Uh, we shopped around for a bit. We had a coffee and a cake later on and just literally just chilled for the rest of the evening. Oh, and finally as well, I can't forget this. We caught up with Live Island as well and then headed to bed. Right, so that is pretty much it guys. That has been a study session with me. As I said, over the next couple of months, over summer, I will be doing a bit of revision here and there. So if there's any sort of topic that you want me to cover, do let me know down in the comments below. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.